Okay, a little shower shooting. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, dear archers, today we will see a little tutorial, not of me, it's from my friend uh, Mark. He spent the last years, days and days, hours and hours of studying the historical texts from manuscripts from Saracen archery, Arab archery and what have you. And he practiced every day to figure out how this shower shooting method worked with the thumb ring. You see many archers, they do it without and shoot in Slavic or whatever, but thumb release with the thumb ring, the original shower shooting technique. And he will show us three versions. A few things before we start. It's with the Turkish style thumb ring. And you see this one is relatively short here. Um, I don't have another one here. The longer lipped ones or with a groove or fancy ones, they will not work as good because we leave the thumb here. But you will see that in a second. What helped me is when I take one of these leather protection thingies, put it the wrong way around and then put my ring on. It helps me to get the ring always in the same position so it doesn't slip backwards and forwards so I have a little more hold on it but that's me. The second important thing is the knock which you want to use for this kind of shooting. I guess they had all their modified knocks or the original Ottoman knocks maybe we're working for it. The normal standard knock is the hardest. It's possible but it can happen because you hold the arrow inside here that you get a finger pinch or uh, string pinching. These ones, the M knocks they work relatively good. Then we have the y knocks. we will try. The u knock is really good. And then of course, obviously the quatch knocks. the small ones are really good. But for me, the big ones, Mihai style, they are just, all these are, I think the Babur knocks. they are just fine because when you hold these ones, first of all, you get an easy grip on it. And second of all, you don't get a string pinch. Let's see what Mark has to say now about the first technique with a thumb ring, with the real historical knocking method. The first method of, of, of shower shooting was, they des it describes holding the arrow in the draw hand with these three fingers, the middle ring and pinky finger. The description says to slam the uh, arrow against the grip of the bow about two-thirds of the way up and then to shove the arrow forward with the palm of the hand. Knock it and immediately draw and fire. Um, I see a lot of other stuff. Uh, a lot of things like um, where they have the arrows and they grab with here and then they spin and and then and then grab this and it's not it's outside the parameters of the description the historical description in the historical source the historical source specifically says to slam the arrow here against the grip about uh, two-thirds of the way up to shove it forward with the palm. So, for shower shooting purposes, this should be one motion. Okay? So, when, when you actually slam this, okay, it's going to bounce. So, really what you want to do is you bring it up, kind of, kind of curve it in and then hook it with a finger. Curve it and hook it with a finger. Okay. Both elbows come up. Now, when the elbow comes up, it turns the hand. Now you have it in the in the proper grip to knock. Okay. Bring them together. Knock. Lock. Smooth draw. And fire. 
Okay. So let's grab another arrow here. Now one fine point when you grip these, the middle finger should be in the groove of the knock. So it's there the whole time. Just like this. Now when we shoot, we want to draw fully. Um, otherwise, you know, it's, it's a lot, it's a wasted, wasted movement, wasted, you know, wasted potential. I'm going to draw the full length of the arrow. Okay. Now, I prefer the snap release, as is Mihai. You draw until there is an inch of the arrow left to be drawn, and then quickly you snatch back the last inch and fire. Similarly, when you go straight through, the last part of the release or the draw is faster, like a whip cracking, right? Throw out the whip and it gets faster, 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 it goes to the end. Very similar. You draw, when you get to the end, speed up to grab that last inch, fire it. When you've mastered that, add another arrow. When you've mastered that, add another arrow. Uh, I think it was Tabari said once he did 15 arrows. Uh, I'm not sure which method he used, but it was probably this one. Probably. How shower, you know, how shower shooting actually started. Um, it, there's a story that it gives in, in uh, the historical source that uh, a guy named Bustam saw a stork and, uh, and it got attacked by a hawk. And the hawk was swooping down on the stork. And it didn't just swoop down and hit it and kill it immediately. It's, it came down, hit it, and flew away. Then it would come back, hit it again, and come back and hit it again, come back... And it was like a, it was a uh, repeated attacks, which gave him the idea for shower shooting. The other story is uh, that a guy named uh, Kisra asked Bustam to shoot a lion in his presence. And when the arrow did not outright kill the lion, he exclaimed that the bow was not a worthy weapon of war or whatever. Because a sword, you can you can attack, 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 one after the other. Uh, a spear, you can jab, 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 one after the other. But when you release the arrow, once you release, it's gone and it exposes the the warrior to danger. So then it was said that Bustam went off and invented the shower shooting method or the series series shooting, where you could fire one arrow after the other. And uh, rather quickly, and that's apparently how this got started. Now I shoot directly with the uh, big coach nooks because it makes my life easy. Why should I make my life harder than necessary? So the middle phalanx, he said, is on the shaft, and the thumb is here on the side. And the middle finger has always presses always the knock down into your hand. And let's see. Suck, and when you come back, you should possibly directly knock. So with the thumb ring, it's a little hard, not so easy. And the string is a little too thin for you, yes, I saw that you knock. That takes a lot of practice, obviously, but hey, so. Thumb ring is on, I hold my arrow, I approach the, you know, like I come up here, Swivel around, push forward, knock, almost, I almost, I missed, only the thumb ring is a little too loose today. I need to tape it most probably, so let's see again. Yeah, kind of, I knocked again, but the ring is too loose. 
so for for detailed finger work it's a little too cold today but the archers in the ancient times did that too at this time so the middle finger is on your knock you approach the bow or hold it you turn around here while you lift the elbow so if you wait a second suck yeah that makes sense then when you come here you just have this this motion here that you get around and when you draw back you automatically show your yo oh, 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 let's say again. Let's check this again. Yeah, almost. This leather is in the way. Oh, it's not easy. Not easy. A little bit cold outside today, so my ring is not fitting perfectly today. Let's see again. So, middle thing is on the knock. Then you're supposed to come up here, turn this around, hold the arrow like this, slide forward, you rotate with your thumb around, and when you come back you knock, and you have, oh, it works, look, and you have your knock, you lock, you shoot. Yeah, it takes a bit, but it works. Look at this, uh, you have it here. Yeah, oops, almost. takes a bit, but it definitely works. Second method of shower shooting, okay? So, it looks something like this. Did you notice anything? Okay. I'm not just going to throw it on here, I'm going to meet it and uh, control both ends of the arrows first. Every single one of these methods, you see that. It's always meet the bow, take control with the thumb and index first, then knock. Okay. See, I'm not doing the finger gymnastics out here in midair first. I wait till I come here, get it under control, then get it in the proper grip, and then fire. I'm not going to take that chance. We're going to make sure the arrow is stable. We have to must have a stable platform to shoot from. We need speed, yes, we want lots of speed, but but not at the expense of having an, an unstable platform to shoot from. Okay? So, there's your second method. Method two, the arrow like this, and you can hold it directly here, I guess. Once you put it on, you swivel around, suck. This is relatively self-explained. How oh, these knocks are too wide. So, and what you need to have, you need good knocking knocks or control over it here works relatively easy. You have the knocks here. Ah, it's too cold. Oh, this is cold. So, method two again, you have the arrows in between your fingers, but at the end here, zack, you leave the middle finger on the knock, you swivel around, hold the arrow again like you have it. This is always the same, like we see in a second in the blind knocking method. You just need to have this, oh, it's too cold, this, this rotation here, that you get the thumb around with the ring around it and you lock again. So it's doable, not so tricky as the first version. Blind knocking. Grip the arrow this way. Uh, two surviving historical sources uh, say the same thing. Uh, for medieval Middle Eastern archery or uh, arrow archery. Middle finger goes in the groove of the knock, which when you grab the arrow this way, immediately indexes the knock. The technique takes care of the indexing. The second you grab this arrow, it's ready to go on the string. There's no wasted time at all. Middle phalanx of the index finger on the shaft of the arrow, thumb on the side, 
uh, contrary to the belief of apparently many people, uh, their techniques were not incompatible with their equipment, namely the thumb ring, the sigir, as it's called, the Turkish thumb ring. Uh, many thumb rings are longer, uh, the Turkish thumb rings are quite short, and this is why. Uh, I had a theory about that, and apparently I was right. So, to knock an arrow, grab it in the, the way I just stated, the string goes under the thumb, all the way back to the web of the hand, and when you pull back, you can literally feel, you keep the middle finger in place the whole way, until it gets kicked out by the string going into the knock, which you can feel. So there's not a doubt in your mind, this arrow is now knocked. So you're not gonna to have to sit there and fiddle with it, okay? It's very simple, it's idiot proof. It's almost impossible to miss a knock with this method. That's why they used it, for warfare. Because it's fast and super reliable. Super fast, super reliable. Third method now of shower shooting, and often referred to as the Ottoman or horseback method. Now, this method has some issues, some problems. The historical source says that this method is faster than the other two, which means it's pretty fast, right? Except Nobody, and I mean nobody, has been doing this method particularly quick. The way that's been done so far is ludicrous. Let me explain. So they hold it something like this up by the points, okay? They hand it off and they run their hand the whole way down this big long shaft here to a knock that they can't see. So you can't really do it all that quickly. You don't know exactly where to stop on a, to a, on a knock of unknown spatial orientation and then stop and then reverse yourself, go forward and then use whatever knocking method that they're using, which isn't this one the historical version given in the, in, the, in the source. So it's no wonder that, that so far this, this method is not, no one's been doing this quickly. Any method that is gonna have any speed to it whatsoever must be done in one motion. So, if we uh, uh, keep to the historical source, I think everything will work out just fine. So, the source says, to grip the arrows at the halfway point, and then to proceed like the first method. And the first method, after you have the grip, on the arrow says to slam the arrow against the grip at the halfway point, which is at the third of the, third of the way from the, from the point or at the halfway point, okay? And then to push the knock forward to the string with the palm, knock draw fire instantly. These descriptions are intentionally vague, I believe. Those that wrote it, this was among their most valuable, valued possessions. They're not just gonna give it away. So they wrote uh, a parameter. So as long as you're within these parameters, you're moving in the right direction when you're figuring this out. And they did this so that only the most dedicated and hardcore archers would ever know what they meant. 
this is what I believe, and I'd probably do the same thing. Back in those days, knowledge was earned. Um, everything pretty much was earned, I think. So, we grasp the arrows at the halfway point. Now we're going to do hand it off to the index and, and thumb. We're going to keep the fingers open like this. And then we're going to lever up on the arrow. Okay? So that it puts friction against the arrow on the inside of our fore, on the inside of our forearm. And now what that does, and it, the, 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 uh, the harder and faster you do it, the better it works. And what happens is it levels out that knock so that it's in the perfect position to grasp it in our, for our blind knocking method. Now instead of stopping and reversing ourselves, what we're going to do is we're going to come back, meet the knock, and get the, the grip, okay, and then take it with us on an ellipse so we don't have to slow down. Does that make sense? So it looks something like that, okay? Until next time. And then the third version, where you usually, you know that, what you all have seen here this way. And I think he has a good point that you need to go back here and reload and, and, and whatever. It, it's quite, I don't know. So maybe he's right. What he read in the description, you grab the arrows halfway. Meet me halfway. Then you swivel up, grab the first one, go back, hold it in your position like you always do, and then the rest like in version one, knock, lock, oops, shoot. Suck, slide back, knock, lock, oh, that is, works not so bad. So my ring is just too loose today. And then you mash the one, and then you take two. Let's see. Oh, getting cookie directly, huh? Ah, the, ah, only the ring is a little in the way. But it works already. The ring is a little too loose today. So you need to have a tight sitting ring. And so it's, you get your hang of it. It's not a problem, I guess. So let's shoot some more coach knocks here. In the version number three. Yeah. You can feel you can sit in your house and fiddle with this. You don't have to shoot, just that you get this rhythm going here, and then it's what you learn from me, shoulder, elbow, hand. Applies here too. <laughs> Remember? So and you, you learn the snake arm with me, this shoulder, elbow, hand, the hand turns and comes back. You remember that one? Now I lost my oh, it is so cold I lost my leather and let's see if it works or not. Uh, yeah, once you have your arrow, shoulder, shoulder, elbow, hand, and the twist with the hand over there that you get your thumb around, you knock automatically when you go back. You just swivel back with your hand and you knock. So it's, it's working. So, zoop, zoop, zoop. And we have another why knock. Why not? Zack, zack. Ah, now it was too. Ah, the ring. ring came loose again. Yeah. So you need a tight sitting ring, please. Look who's coming out. Yeah, I push the ring away. The ring is too loose. That's bad. I did I have a ring, but I don't have one on. And it's easy. Always when you come forward, you knock automatically. He's right, and then you just swivel over with a tight sitting ring. It works. So, Mark, thank you very much for your studies. 
and for your practice, never ending practice. Works neat, so you need to fiddle really, first of all get a tight sitting ring. This, this, this loose thing gets pushed away once you go forward here, but then it's you swivel around, suck, and while you draw back, you have it. One thing, what you should try and accomplish is when you go forward, you knock, you don't knock, then turn, lock, and then start drawing. You do this directly in one motion. And that's why do it slow first. If you can't do it slow, you can't do it fast. You go forward, go around it, knock. Oh. See, you can't do it slow. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Suck. You knock, turn, and you direct it. Oop! Almost. Where did I shoot this arrow? Again, hold it tight. Come forward, you go around, and while you draw back, suck, you turn your thumb and you draw this all in one motion. Saving time. Let's see another look. This is just you practice it a while. Ah, no, see, another ring jumped over it. So it takes a little long, but do it slow first. So that you get the feeling. Suck, suck, suck. Okay, now I have a different knock. Suck. Nope. It. The ring is moving again, so you really need a tight sitting ring for that. At least I need one, otherwise I am not capable. Because even here, when I press against it, I already turn the ring to the side. So you really need a tight sitting ring. Then you need to have this around, knock. Yeah, it, it works. So do it slow first and try to not Stop here. That you're not, okay, I'm here now, I need to knock, lock. You have a, a stop for nothing. So try to do this all in one motion. Zack, lock, knock, draw. It's cold now. You get the point. Uh, so again, thank you very much, Mark, for studying so hard, practicing so hard. I know that you spend hours and hours and hours in your garage doing that. Thank you very much for doing it. So this is the historically, I guess, correct method of shower shooting with a thumb ring, which is really, I don't know many. They do this with a thumb ring. Actually, I don't know anyone doing this shower shooting method this way with a thumb ring. So even with leather protection or whatever, or without, or with Slavic, it's always easier. Doesn't take that much skills. Oh, I can't get my ring off now. You know, when you shoot Slavic, it's it's, it's like you knock and you have it here and easy peasy. But then to get the thumb ring around, that's the skill. That's why you can work on. Have a look again at the video from Mark. And enjoy practicing. Let me know in the comment section how it works for you. Thank you again, Mark. And that's all I have for you today, guys. It's way too cold. I catch you in the next one.